It's Saturday, so today we're going to go practice some tracks for the minor shoot. Is anybody interested in this? So I'm here at the studio. I've got a bunch of jazz to shed, but I think I want to shed Ben's tracks first. Do people care? Is this interesting to anybody? So obviously I've got a little complex about this. Who am I to presume anyone gives three shits about what I do in an average week. I glaze over when I see videos where the creator assumes they're interesting. So usually I like to come here three times a week. Maybe if you're Meghan Markle or Vladimir Zelensky. Otherwise, no. But I'm making this video about one week in my life because maybe it'll resonate with your life or provide some value to you. With all that throat clearing out of the way, it has been an interesting week for me. A busy one, and it'll give you a snapshot into the life of just one drum YouTuber. In case you're wondering what that's like. If I look like I'm over it, it's because I'm running out of time and the shotgun mic keeps failing. But let me take you with me, uh, we'll do this. Today on 8020, a week in the life of a drum YouTuber. Stay tuned. So guys, super briefly, today's video is brought to you by me, the 8020 drummer. If you're interested in going a little deeper on everything we've got going on over there, I recommend you check the video at the card on your screen. It'll tell you about three controversial things we believe over here at 8020HQ and how it can help your drumming. Check that out at that card. All right, on to the next. So it's Samba Saturday because it's alliteration and I just decreed it. On the list for today, make this video. Upload those minor tracks to GarageBand, get some actual takes so I can send them to the guy. Oh, and before that, lead one of my coaching groups. But first, I gotta go to the gym. Absolute power in Williamsburg. Don't stalk me, you guys. I finally have an excuse to work sick reps into an 80-20 video. Okay, okay, stay with me though. Back to drumming. Back to drumming. Now let's go back to the beginning of this crazy week. Yeah, and I'm gonna have to narrate this part because... The week began with three things. It was going to be day two of my practicing the kick feathering for my last video. And also, I'm not ashamed to admit, I was following my subscriber count pretty closely because in the next day or so, I was going to hit 100k. More on that later. And finally, I needed to record some intros and outros for my new live coaching program. It was an average gray day in Brooklyn, and I went the extra mile and captured this footage of some of the neighborhood in my literally five minute drive to the studio. Remarkably, the audio started working again for some of the practice footage. Let's cut in here and explain quickly what I was trying to do. It's an exercise I made a video about a few years ago, but haven't practiced in a while. It's one of my favorite techniques for playing the brushes slowly. Five, six, seven. Anyway, I'd had a frustrating Friday afternoon practice after trying to do the feathering slowly with brushes, hence this being the first thing I hit. Next, I picked up the sticks and hit some more feathering. Here's a clip explaining the primary challenge of feathering with bass drum accents. Of course, we've all spent years practicing John's book with the hand independence exercises, but I'm going to shed the foot independence stuff, doing as John suggests, and stopping a beat before the accent. It has to feel second nature. Otherwise, it's not going to swing and flow. And here's some audio list footage, probably of me saying it was a decent practice session, and now I'm going home to check my subscriber numbers. So, thing you may actually be wondering about number one. How much time do I have for practice, given that I'm always shooting videos? As I'll speak about in greater detail later, my week is actually divided up amongst four big things I have to get done. Practice, preparing for the minor shoot, making content for my new live group coaching intensive, and making content for this channel. When I go to the shed on any given day, it's usually to do practice in one of those other things. And here's what people get wrong about drum YouTubers. Well, about me, at least. They assume if we're making videos all the time, there's no incentive to practice. What they forget is, we want to sound good in those videos. So I at least try to get an hour of practice every day. The way it usually shakes out when it's a busy week like this is, one hour for setup, teardown, and whatever I need to shoot, one hour for pure practice. And then, if I'm lucky, an extra hour there that if I don't use it up, I can also use for practice. 
The exception is that if I'm filming exercises for my new course, sometimes I count the inventing and practicing and learning and then filming the exercise as practice too. I know, it's a fudge. More on that course later. So I'm back from the gym and now it's time to lead my coaching group. Are we arrogant enough to jump around in the timeline like I'm Christopher Nolan? See, Sammy's wife came to me. Sammy didn't have a wife. Just work with me here. I'm trying to create a mosaic that transcends time and space. I lead two live coaching groups each week. The first is the hour session I do for the course I co-teach with Jacob Evans, 8020 Drum Flow. And then I have two hour long sessions with students from my own program, which I'm creating in real time with them. Here's some footage of a live session I did with them earlier in the week when, you guessed it, no shotgun mic audio. Just for fun, here's some other audio list footage of me practicing later that afternoon. All of which brings us to thing you might legitimately be wondering number two, how I make money. The answer by and large is this. Okay, this is feedback for, for module three. Um, I'm a teacher of sorts, but with the leverage and reach of the internet. That sounds really grandiose. What I really mean is I get on Zoom in my little studio where the space heater doesn't work half the time and coach groups of drummers. Like this session, you're probably wondering why is audio list? And the answer is, so I'm actually in two coaching programs. You could say I'm on the faculty of something called Drum Flow, which I run with my partner in crime, Jacob Evans. Oh, yo, what's up, dude? And I'm also in the process of building the sequel to that program, which is almost halfway complete, and which now has almost 10 students making their way through it. Which brings me to why this is such a big time commitment. See these big blocks and this hypothetical oversimplified calendar from which all personal information is removed? The way it went was basically a bunch of people joined me with the promise of, hey, I'm gonna coach you through this thing, and it's gonna be live. Are you in? That was great because we could start right away, and because I could actually mold the course around those real flesh and blood students who were sending me videos. It was hard because I had to stay ahead of them in the syllabus. Like building a railroad in front of a really slow moving train. That's why in between all this other stuff, you'll see me doing things like this. Module intros. Shooting speaking parts for the online parts of the course. Welcome to module four. So far, you've mastered improvising with accented and unaccented strokes. I also have to make a bunch of time to do mundane but important things like sending footage to the editor, keeping track of everything in this big syllabus spreadsheet, sending things to the transcriber, and actually adding things to the course platform. But it's all worth it when I get to hop on a call and hear that hopefully some of this has helped someone. So that's the biggest piece of how I get paid these days. So I'm here at the studio. I've got a bunch of jazz to shed, but I think I want to shed Ben's tracks first. Actually, it's just one track for now. Uh, yeah, but I'm super excited. Let's see how that goes. I've hired a guy named Benjamin to write tracks for me for the minor shoot. That also means in this shared practice studio, I've got to set up all my new beautiful minors before I shoot, then tear them down because they're thin jazz cymbals and this is a place of metal. So this is the first playthrough with the actual track, and I can tell I'm gonna need a click track during the floaty sections. Which brings us to thing you're probably wondering about number three. What's up with all this minor stuff? Well, excerpt. So I've got a set of symbols that sound great that I'll introduce you to, but in early 2023, I'll be taking a trip to the US headquarters to pick out my own set. And at some point, I'll also be filming some playing for their channel. Since that video, I and the folks at Minel have worked out a time for me to visit the US headquarters. And while I'm there, we're shooting at least three tracks. And they've already booked the flight, so this is real. Like, no backing out. And that also brings me to this drum rider, which I'm procrastinating because, well, this is the kid I play on, and this is the other kid I play on. So I'm gonna have super specific to the letter requirements about the kid I wanna play. So anyway, I've gotta research shell sizes and heads and eventually get that done. The fun part though is finding tracks. I get to decide what tracks I play over and that means fun. There's a whole history of great drummers playing along with great tracks. From Nick Smith in the Soul Tone days, to Chesley Cheese Allen with bangers like this, to like, all the minor stuff. Spaven, Arthur Natick, Spanky of course, St. Matt of Garska, and Jerris Oakley. So I'm working with a guy named Ben, who I met on Instagram, who wrote stuff like this. I sent him a bunch of stuff I like, and he came back with some samples, and this is one of them. I don't think once we have some kind of click track in the middle part, this is gonna require much practice. It's more about memorizing where the phrases begin and end and getting in the right headspace to play Dilla beats and some tasty 30 seconds like Chesley. 
or one of my other heroes, Noah. So it's Sunday and today I'm sending the last of the course intros to the editor. Then I gotta finish filming and writing the content piece for YouTube, which means the decidedly unsexy work of sitting at this desk for hours and hours. I got my coffee right there. It's also gonna be a lot of unphotogenic things like taking baths and occasionally crying myself to sleep in the fetal position. Also, I owe some members of my coaching group some feedback. Thing you might be wondering about number four. What's my process for making YouTube videos? That process has changed a number of times. I used to just set up the camera in front of the drums and deliver essentially a clinic live, then edit it down. That was easy to film and got like zero views. Think about it. People watch YouTube on their TVs now. They want a story arc. They want to go on a journey. Through the years, I started getting a little more filmmakery and begrudgingly learning about what to do on screen when you tell a story. Like B-roll or roving A-roll or nonlinear storytelling. And of course, you have to worship at the Church of Nystad. But there are other YouTubers who are also a huge influence. Alex, the French guy cooking. So we need to try and achieve two things with the rice. Number one, a great texture. Mary Spender for the seamless cuts and great storytelling. So do you want the good news or the bad news? First, the bad news. And Johnny Harris, just anytime you want to feel bad about yourself as a YouTuber, because his chops are ridiculous. Also, honorable mention, <sighs> my fellow drummer Brandon Scott, who's a damn good filmmaker in his own right. Good morning. And Zach, who's a genius at comic timing and pacing a video. Yeah, good evening. So now I have a style that's hopefully more entertaining to watch, but which is also way more labor intensive than just speaking to camera from behind a drum kit. But there's a challenge. If you want something to be off the cuff, natural and spontaneous, you have to just shoot and see what you get. But pulling a storyline out of hours of footage is also exponentially more time consuming than just scripting something. But then you lose the spontaneity. So I usually try to split the difference and fall somewhere in between. I might shoot some stuff with the camera just to see what we get and set a direction, then start scripting the rest, leaving room for the plot to change. That hopefully preserves some of the spontaneity, but lets me keep a border around the workload so I know I can make a video for a deadline. So we're back at the studio again, and today we're gonna shoot the speaking parts for the latest 8020 video. Let's go. Once the video is roughly scripted, I can shoot whatever footage I need to finish it. Then all the files get uploaded to Google Drive, cataloged and labeled, and sent to the editor, who, if all goes according to plan, will be editing this very scene in a few days. And if he decides to do something funny or meta with this, I'll respect it. To get really technical though, you might be wondering, how does the editor know how to splice things together? That all comes back to the script. Over the years, we've figured out a way to color code and annotate things, so the editor knows what I'm thinking with a scene. Then he picks up where my amateurish ability to envision video leaves off. In a couple days, I'll be checking my inbox for the first draft of the edit, and that's one of the best parts of my week. It's like Christmas. Well, we're finally done shooting, and now it's back home to upload stuff, and hopefully finish that drum rider. So that's one week in the life. I really wish I had something sexier to show you guys, like a clinic tour or the NAMM show, or anything other than me grinding away during the New York winter. Oh, I did forget one thing. Lots of jujitsu. And also, I do have a dog and a family and people who occasionally hang out with me. And calls. Lots of calls. So many calls. As I said, this is kind of a simplified version. And I'm not going to say something pithy like, I know it's a grind, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. But to be honest, I do kind of like my life. And if you like this video and want to hear more about everything we've got going on at 8020, check this video on your screen. If you want to hear more about how I make money, check this one or this one. And I'll see you back here in probably two weeks. Oh, and I almost forgot. I did hit that 100 subscribers Monday morning. Thanks, everybody.